this is Shabdur Shri Goswami and I am going to take you to part 2 of machine learning. So last class we have seen that you know how machine learning is defined, how it is different from traditional programming techniques. Today we will look at the main, uh, main way we can classify machine learning tasks. Okay, so it can be classified in terms of the learning paradigm. So, which is like, you know, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, reinforcement learning, and semi-supervised learning. Don't worry about uh, the distinction of, of them. We'll cover them in details. And supervised learning can be uh, further bifurcated into classification and regression. So, this is one way. Another is, uh, which is not a very common way, is how the model learns. Okay, so uh, there can be two approaches. One is that you train the model and then you deploy it okay so this is called as a offline or batch model so the the model is trained offline not interacting with the real time environment the online models has a component where the model can be updated while while it is in production okay now uh, let me also tell you that we will focus more on supervised and unsupervised learning in this course uh, so our 90 percent focus will be on supervised and unsupervised learning uh, we will touch upon reinforcement learning and semi-supervised learning with some you know uh, interesting case studies all right so let's now look at supervised learning uh, and and the classification part. So the first of all, what you see is that this has two phases in it. Okay. So in first phase, what is happening is that you have given some data. So you treat this as data. Okay. So uh, you are not giving it as an image. So basically, maybe some attributes of the ducks, some attributes of the rabbit, some attributes of the porcupine. Okay. And uh, it gives a predictive model as an output okay so one thing uh, to be noted is that with each observation it is labeled okay so this labeling actually gives the term as supervised or supervision okay so someone has already told you okay some teacher or supervisor has already told you that see this is a duck see this is not a duck and like that and once this predictive model is ready and you give an unlabeled instance to this predictive model you get the label output as dark so, you know pay close attention that here the label is not there okay because this is the intention of this classification framework okay now let us look at uh, a more detailed example of classification how actually the data looks like so basically you know uh, data uh, when we talk about data we will focus more on structured data what is structured data structured data is something which can be uh, organized in, in a tabular format in rows and columns okay so here what we are trying to do essentially is that we are trying to predict whether the weather is conducive to play golf or not okay so this is a classification problem and uh, these are different attributes so these are called as predictors this can be called as regressors this can be called as independent attributes and play golf can be uh, called as target can be called as class can be called as the dependent variable okay so different terminologies exist Okay, one important thing that I want again to pay close attention is that classification deals with a fixed set of categories. Okay, so when your target play golf has values like yes and no, so you cannot expect that your classification algorithm will give an output which is maybe. Okay, so similarly, if you in the last example, instead of dark and not dark, if you would have treated your uh, system to maybe learn the species of the bird, whether it is a dark or a chicken, and if you give it a penguin, it cannot say 
that it is it is a duck or a chicken okay so it it has to be a fixed set of categories that is one of the characteristics of the classification algorithm all right now what about regression so regression has same kind of input and output so you have same you know series of independent variables and dependent variables the most striking difference between classification and regression is that in regression the output is a continuous valued variable so in there what we were trying to do was we are either trying to predict it is a dark or a not dark we were trying to predict whether the weather is conducive to play or not so here it is more like predicting sales amount of new product based on advertising expenditure okay or predicting wind velocities as a function of temperature humidity air pressure etc time series prediction of a stock market index so all these cases the the variable that we are going predicting is of continuous nature okay all right now let's look at unsupervised learning and the most important part of unsupervised la learning is clustering okay so here what happens is look at the difference between classification and clustering closely so here there are no two phases it is only one phase and the second thing is that you don't have any labels associated okay and basically what clustering tries to do is it tries to find natural groups among the data what is the characteristic of the group the members of the group are similar to each other and between the groups they are not similar okay but i want to wanted to pause and think about that whether you will agree with this kind of uh, grouping structure okay so i think some of you might think that why do we need to put a rabbit and a porcupine in different groups we can put them in same group all right so if you have thought that you know uh, congratulation you have identified one of the main challenges of unsupervised learning so that is the reason you know unsupervised learning is more challenging than supervised learning what is the challenge the challenge is you don't know how many groups you will stop at okay so this is another kind of Uh, unsupervised learning which is called as market basket analysis so basically as the name suggest that you try to analyze which product sells well with other product so you can if you know that from a supermarket's point of view or a online retailer point of view you can give you know similar promote or or appropriate promotion strategies so your sales you know goes up okay so this is this is one uh, technique which which can also be uh, coming under association rule mining or association rule analysis okay another important area uh, is called as recommender system so this is also one of the very upcoming field of machine learning the idea is that if there are two users look at this graphic if there are two users and they are similar and the, if this person has already seen movies abc or purchased product abc and this user has purchased a and b then recommend c to uh, this user okay because these two users tastes match all right and uh, it would be unfair if i don't talk about uh, the netflix price here so actually this netflix price what makes recommendation system very hot and not now it was back in 2006 where they uh, launched a competition with uh, 1 million dollar of prize money okay and uh, i would definitely recommend that you read up more about this competition okay so now let's look at reinforcement learning so reinforcement learning has few components okay so one component is the environment and another component is the agent okay so the what we were doing in uh, you know supervised and unsupervised so far uh, we were treating with individual individual rows okay so uh, reinforcement learning is not about a individual row okay so it is more about a sequence it is more about that if i am going to play chess that what sequence of my moves 
will make me win the game okay so it is not one move so there is there is some connection which is like a episode in case of reinforcement learning okay so this is one of the you know key contrasting factors with supervised and unsupervised learning so the agent actually wants to learn a policy of how to go uh, to this tap and maybe collect water okay so there are rewards and penalties all right so basically it it observes and then it selects a action using policy so basically you know if it is getting a penalty it will you know not update that policy if it is getting a reward then it will update the policy so that's how it learns okay so finally uh, it will uh, it will learn to optimally go to the tap and you know collect water so one uh, one uh, other thing that i want to tell you in reinforcement learning is that this is a very trial and error environment but what in in spite of that what you are trying to do is that you are trying to you know uh, trying to dissuade the uncertainty that is there uh, in in this and basically there is no concrete learning uh, rules again like machine learning okay so basically again going back to the example of bicycle which is which is uh, reinforcement learning so basically if you think of you know penalty and uh, reward so if you fall down that's a penalty and if you can go for certain period of time that's like a reward you know so you know that okay if i if i paddle this way then you know i i can propel faster or you know i can keep my balance something of that sort but there is no concrete rule it is a, it is a very it is very uncertain environment and depends on the agent on the environment and stuff like that okay so this is reinforcement learning and then we have semi supervised learning so semi supervised as the name suggests it is somewhere between supervised and unsupervised so uh, you have a lot of data available but not all data are labeled okay and what you want to do is you want to use the label data to actually increase your training corpus okay so basically what does that mean is that you know you you have already some classified documents and then you you call the them as labels and then you use that further to classify some of the unlabeled data okay to increase your training size okay so that is semi supervised i know that it might be little confusing so let's look at an example okay so one of the very used example is speech analysis so maybe you you know you are trying to do a speech to text so the utterance of the words are there and the corresponding word is also there so you can understand that in this particular scenario uh, labeling this utterances is very difficult because someone has to say it listen to it carefully then put the english word corresponding to it so it's very you know it's very hectic and uh, tiring okay expensive now uh, what can be done is that you have some way uh, label some of the utterances okay and then you are trying to find similar uh, utterances so let's say i am i am talking about class okay so this can be um, pronounced pronounced in different manner so some may say class uh, some may be more flat like class so but but there will be some similarity so in semi supervised learning what they will do is they will try to find out the similar a similar pronunciation of class in the same group and and create another labels so these are called as pseudo labels okay so this is the idea of semi supervised learning all right so some other areas that i would uh, like to draw your attention to are time series data outlier detection and representational learning so this doesn't typically come under the machine learning tasks so when you are uh, dealing with normal machine learning tasks they don't assume that the observations have something to do with each other but in time series it is not like that okay so this is the only thing that i want to uh, tell you and like 
you know we have used or seen at classification regression and clustering time series can also be classified clustered and the value can be predicted so there are very interesting uh, examples uh, of using time series data okay uh, so one of them is maybe you know you are you are you are looking at the ecg okay ecg signal and you are trying to classify whether that is a normal signal or you know it, it is uh, indicating some abnormality okay so outlier detection can be done uh, using both classification and clustering but you cannot really you know put under those frameworks that we have defined and representational learning is also a very very interesting thing uh, where you you basically try to find out that uh, you know uh, if certain data uh, so if if you are using four very variables to represent the data can that be represented using two variables also okay so that can be original variables or that can be variables in the transformed space okay so there are very interesting concepts like PCA, TSNI, uh, SOM, and then uh, lately uh, word embeddings and auto encoders where uh, this representational learning is uh, applied. So I hope you got some understanding of how uh, these learning methods are different. And uh, let's hope uh, we will uh, see how to evaluate the model and everything in the next class.